Why does everything need to be that difficult on this engine? If it would be easy, it would be a Toyota. What? If that engine's ever gonna run again. Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this episode, we continue to assemble our Ford 2.7 liter TDV6 diesel engine. Hope you enjoy the video. Endlich. Oh. <laughs> Getting all nice so, and shiny. This is an emery class and it's about, I want to say 600 grit maybe. Really fine, that's more polishing. Cleaning up the cylinder head. Is that where the glow plug is coming in or that? Yeah. This is where the injector comes oh. in. Day to day. So the sun's out. We don't even have a fire extinguisher here. Yeah, then we get the fire extinguisher. Oh, I better get that. Pack this one here a little bit. Yeah, we'll do that off camera. So he put in like the least amount of effort. <laughs> this is our flushing setup. See if the spray is good. What? Are you sure you put in the correct... Um... Watch it, the pump is smoking when he turns it on. And he's still... <laughs> Shit, so now we have a problem. And it's smoking. Now we're gonna have to use Robbie's pump. That sucks. Because well, that is an oil spill waiting to happen. Cleaning the cylinder head. Watch your pants. Oh, my pants are already dirty. I gotta go into the root canal here. <laughs> and you know which all are root canals? Yeah. I'm so stressed. So only two. Okay. Yeah, one going in, one coming out. So now we do the other side one more time. A lot of chunk in here. I know it's not metal chips, there. but it's... Uh, Leave that in there. This is the intake. Oh my God. The I'm gonna puke soon. That's also intake. Oh, look at that. Now you have to flush the wood canal again. No, no. Yeah, we should have done that first. No. Oh, why are you disagreeing with me all the time? That's my job. So this is an oil-based lacquer thinner, and in order to get that off and get it all dry, I spray on some more brake cleaner. And now go back a little bit with the camera. Got them all. This thing is absolutely dry and spotless now. See? I think so. Absolutely. So this one got to go inside and the second one needs cleaning. Yep. You see, here's our setup. That's the operating room. Here we have our operating table. <laughs> That's where the hardcore stuff is going to get done. All my tools. Now, I already laid them out. The manual. Well, Christian cleaned up nicely. Oh, there's no dust and spider webs falling from above. And he hurt his, his back while carrying the engine block over here. Do we want to play what's this part with Vera? No. What's this part? Well, it's a valve. Exactly. Yeah. What's going in this hole? Um, oh, the hydrostösel. Genau. Oh, I, I don't know, know the English word. Yeah, let's call it hydraulic yeah. lifter. Hydrostösel yeah. is correct. What's coming through these holes? Air. Very good. What's running in this crevasse here along? Oil. No, here in this crevasse. Oh, the camshaft. Exactly. So, that's good. 
Yep. Getting the oil gallery closed up and we use this Loctite 270. Some on here. Made a special punch. And this goes back in here. There we go. And what's important here is to have this correct depth all the way around. One millimeter, 0 0.84, 0 0.83. Here I machined the tool half a millimeter deeper. Two millimeter deep. That's good. Yeah, you can just put that engine back together. Work in progress the entire time you have to manufacture special tools. It's not easy. Did we get them new? No, these are oh. from, from a little while ago. He didn't buy them new. That's okay. It's always helpful if you got the right tool, you know. So I machined this. They will go in nicely and not being distorted. There we go. Good. Step done. So this one is an O-ring. We could not get individually. You could only get the full thing. So don't tell Fabian about it, okay? It's not even Land Rover had it. So this piece goes in there. But the O-ring feels real good, so I don't think this will leak. Because from 8 to 11. Oh, no, I have to look for parts. No. 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 Oh, there it is. I think so. Yes. And so this O-ring should be in the Land Rover parts. So I'll show you where that is. Here's the Land Rover box. Oh. This is what we bought from Land Rover. The content of this bag is 230 euros. Okay, and there's the O-ring. Yeah. One part down. 1,500 to we go. We need another M6 by 20. Yeah, so we need another one of those. This is coolant fluid, so we're supposed to use Oil. silicon grease. See how good that fits. So the first bolt out of Hundreds. That's like the second bolt we are screwing in and we are already missing one. Okay, so now we got to mount the seal here. Yeah? Yeah. This is the new seal. Yeah. It looks like an entire part. And then we have a new crankshaft positioning sensor. Yeah. The crankshaft palm journal should be clean, free from debris and dry prior to assembly. So no oil. Hand pressure only. Remove plastic assembly tool, fit 10 bolts and torque to spec. I don't have any idea. The plastic cap is like a funnel. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. Now locate it with the PR dowels and apply it with Hand pressure. Hand pressure only. Yeah. Lock tidying on. So, you're gonna enjoy that in a time lapse. Why don't you slide it in with those two black. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Man. <laughs> and this is why they say you shouldn't drop this bolt when you install this in the engine. Yeah. Yeah, see? But it's actually a retained bolt. So four to six. Yep. Good. This is gonna be installed non-lubricated. And this dowel pin fits in this dowel hole. That's the only way it really goes on and then it lines up with these bolts. There and there. And now this piece has here one locator. 
and it actually fits only on here in one orientation. It looks like it fits in two, but in the other orientation it doesn't fit. See? It's, it's idiot proof. So now all I gotta do is put this on here and set this over this. Screw it in sufficiently deep and it's supposed to work with my $34 cheap Chinese mount your crankshaft positioning sensor. So I got it all the way in. There are certain things in life where you gotta beat on with a hammer. And if we compare this now with my cell phone picture, it should line up exactly the same way as a couple of months ago. What was it years ago? This is a little bit on this side of the hole. There is also the barcode. Yeah. Yeah, the DMC code. So this is good. It also looks like it's sitting nice and even, so my beating with the hammer was very good. It's cheap Chinese, but cheap. There, exactly. Oh, it's already in. Can leave it. It's good. No? And what about the lever? Oh. Oh, now, on the third attempt, you found everything. Stop complaining. And again, what's nice on the Phi pump is that the seal sticks out significantly. Yeah. The PTF oil seal gets installed dry. Going on like this. And now I can seat the pump nicely. And I have this alignment tool in, which is supposed to do the job. This is now a little tricky because it doesn't have the locating dowels. Mm. And for example, down here, we want to make sure the pump is aligned nicely. But they are not torqued yet. No. See right here? This is nice and flush. Everybody can see that. That's really important. Okay, torque to 10 Newton meter. No. You missed one screw. Which one? That one. <laughs> okay. Good. Now you said I gotta rotate the crankshaft two revolutions. Yep. One. Two. Well, that's enough. Do we want to measure our torque to rotate? No. Because I now all is it's all done. We can't and change we, it anymore. Anyway. We can't change it anymore. Now the PTFE seal got going. Do we have one? Yeah, it came with the file. Oh, yeah. And there is this alignment tool included here. And I'm gonna have to, of course, machine A oh. as usual. <laughs> I'm gonna have to machine A, and when Seating. you push this seal in, you wanna have it one millimeter under flush. Oh front crankshaft seal to be inserted such that its front face is one millimeter under flush with the machine front face of the oil pump. The seal is not to be pushed all the way into the bore, as this will block the seal drains. Exactly. I don't think I it can get any more complicated than that. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to make a tool quickly. And now I'm gonna push this in with the installation sleeve here. There. Dry. Use my installation tool, which gets me the exact correct recess. One millimeter recess. Nice and even. I got a special tool to hold the pulley wheel in place. This is what the tool looks like, simply made. Okay, now 
This gets assembled dry, no lubrication. I use a new bolt because I don't know how often the previous bolt was used. Also dry, comes dry out of the package. First stage 100 Newton meters. In the second stage, we got to do 90 degrees, not exceeding 400 Newton meters. So I got the torque wrench set to 380. If it clicks before I have 90 degrees, I stop. When this wrench is straight up and when I come around, you grab the wrench and you help pull it and I grab your handle and you I keep pulling, yeah? And we got to stop when it clicks, 90 degrees. Pull, 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 good. Perfect. So, very well. We tighten these with 25 Newton meters. Now we go to eat lunch. Fill the dirty oil gallery. So we're priming the pump from the other side. And now I rotate the pump counterclockwise. It sucks the oil in and see it comes out on the bottom. Suck it in so it's under flush with the housing. Take this out. Now it's topped up. And the gasket, this goes on like this. It's a steel gasket, 140 euros. And it's advisable to replace this because it's difficult to clean the oil cooler. So this fits nicely. Okay, so the oil cooler is in. So we got the comfort of installing the float plugs with the heads removed. We put on some high temperature special grease to keep them from seizing. Okay, that's it. Couldn't be any easier. And I go only with 10 Newton meters, not more. And we used Bosch glow plugs now. Yeah, not the original Beru. Um, and of course not the Stark one. So now it's a good time to test the glow plugs. This one is working. This one is working. Working. Okay, so we're mounting the first cylinder head. This was your t-shirt. Yeah, 10 years ago. Now look over here. These two bushings got to be inserted first. And of course the face got to be clean. And now here I got the gasket. Oh my and God. remember we calculated the number two size gasket and we were only like one hundredths to the border of a three. Because a three was installed originally, we're putting back the original size, because yeah, but, we're only talking about a hundred. But we, we put in new pistons. Yeah, but it so doesn't you... matter. I, I decided, okay, let's do another take. <laughs> this is a L-ring quality gasket right here. Okay, can't put it on wrong. So all I got to do is place it on here. Yeah. There, it's in. Yeah. And this is why we had to put the glow plugs in first. You can see how tight it is to get them in now with the fuel pump installed. And this is also the one you're going to have a little bit of trouble when you take them out while the, the engine is still installed. So now, the bolts, they're supposed to come pre-lubricated, but the ones we bought here from Victor Renz are not pre-lubricated. I'm using your toothbrush and I lubricate them under the bolt head. This is because they came dry out of the box. One more. Okay. This is the tightening order from the L-ring gasket. It matches the Land Rover specification. The first go around is 20, so this is number one. So I got 40 adjusted here on this torque wrench. Now the next one is 80.
So this one is 180 degree with a maximum of 230 newton meter. I'm gonna start it and then we both pull it to 180. One. That was now too easy. And that thing moved. Two. Stop. Four. There. Good. Done. Okay. It's gotta be clean. Yeah. Now on this cylinder side, there is this little filter what we have to insert here. You don't want to. Filter. You don't want to forget this little filter. Oh my God. No, it doesn't fit. This little filter insert is not drilled through here. Are you shitting me? You okay. almost screwed that one up. Yeah, the big piece goes in first. See? Yeah. There you go. So this now goes the gasket on like fits. This. Yeah. Now the cylinder head. I got the same. Your toothbrush is all dirty. So we're gonna install these new hydraulic lifters here. Here are per cylinder bank the bad ones and the good ones. And the bad ones, and there's the right hand. So the right hand had more bad ones and only four good ones. And when you have a bad one, you can see what they do. I know this from the guy from Broken Piston Garage. This one is really loose, and versus when you have a good one, they solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are all solid. And when you take a new one out of the box, they also solid. Finding the crankshaft. Um, position for setting up the timing is more difficult than we thought. What we found out is that you need to get a position on the crankshaft which is 30 degrees past top dead center on piston number one. So I show you how we did this. First you find roughly your top dead center on piston number one here, which is right around here. You insert a chopstick with a little detent in it and you set this gauge on top. So it goes into this little detail here. And there you find now the top dead center by a hundredth of a millimeter. That's top dead center, right? Yep. You take your little chopstick back out. So you need a precision angle finder here. And you set that on the wrench here and you zero it out. And now I gotta find that in one clean sweep. I can't go back. Uh, zero points now. Oh. That's good, yeah? You sure? Yes, that's 30 degrees. Yeah. That is actually the crankshaft locking pin position where you would typically install a pin right here. Which we don't have. That's the whole problem. We did not know In this that. position, this hole lines up back here. See, if you look at the flywheel, which is still loose, this lines now up here. Yeah. See that? I measure this step. So next time we have then a stop pin. 74.2. So we're gonna manufacture the crankshaft timing pin. Why does everything need to be that difficult on this engine? If it would be easy, it would be a Toyota. So... Okay, so I made now this pin based on our scientific measurement here. And I made it out of an M10 Allen head bolt. Which right we here. did not know that we needed. So okay. all other yeah. TDV6 so, engine so builder. So drawing I made. And I came with a dimension of 74.2. If I crank this pin now in here, right there, tighten it up. Now you can see I got now a solid end stop for the crankshaft. Watch it. Oh. So this goes now. 
oh, solid that's... against it. You know, you can apply huge forces to this pin. So that's the pin nobody has. And this makes now the flywheel over here line up. See how much slop the flywheel has? Yeah. And it takes out that slop. Okay, because now I know where this pin goes. And that sets my timing over to the flywheel precisely. Yeah, good. Now this was really stressful. Um, we're going to insert now the crank, the camshafts. And what we got to do before we insert them is use Vera's toothbrush and put gear oil into the mains. This is not regular engine oil. So I put this on here. This also smells completely different, this oil. And you can see this is sick like honey. It's more like an assembly loop. So this is how I have to insert the assembly now. I have the black links lining up here on the camshafts. I got the tensioner in between, the pin is still in, and this one line, lines up on this link. Now I take the assembly, after I looped everything with various toothbrush, and I put them in there together, seeding the tensioner here, seeding the camshaft, and I rotate them a little bit out of position, this way they are nice and relaxed, even if they are not at 12 o'clock now, because when I turn them at 12 o'clock you can see it lifts them up. And that's it, and now I can mount the caps. But you're wrong again. Why? Because that I'm line has to be mounted first. Tightening first. Mounting is not problem. So you can mount them, but tightening has to yes. be that line first. These numbers on there do not really indicate in what orientation they go. They only indicate the place where yeah, they Yeah, but go. it makes sense that the arrow part goes to the inside, you know. Where is an arrow? Well, here. So the, the tippy part. Yeah, know? I would think that makes sense, yeah. What? Is that engine ever going to run again? No, it's going to run. Whatever. So now we got to tighten these with one newton meter. That's where I actually would prefer your tool. Can you get your tool? Yes. No, oh, that's my bike toolbox. One newton meter. So here is Vera's tool. So oh, I has to be tightened first. And I think I, I is that one. One. I is the one. Yeah, I is the first one. This one? Yeah. Wrong, this one is I. Good. Let me first seat them a little bit. Yeah. He, of course, put numbers on it. And not letters. And the tightening order is one newton meter. Is that the first tightening Yeah, one, one out of many. Okay. Okay, now we gotta check camshaft end float. Mm. Do we have a number? So camshaft end float is minimum five hundredths. If I ever find my feeler gauge here, wasting everybody's time. 0 0.15 is maximum. So this one, oh wow. I need a hammer to knock this around. Yeah, it goes it goes in here. Zero point five goes in. Zero point five. Zero point zero five goes in. And zero point one is tight. And here it doesn't go in. But zero point one five will not go in. So the float is within spec. So this is the assembly now. And it's got to be inserted in one piece here. There we go. Our operation clean room. This one does not get mounted. Now the other ones mm -hmm. is J. J is here. Which is this one here. Your mountain bike torque wrench. Yeah. We start at the back side of the engine. So it came with our canyon bike.
Boy, this is really nothing. Five newton meters. So these get a little bit of clue. They specify a two millimeter to three millimeter bead. I think this is good. I don't think so. This groove is there, so it accepts the excess bead. So I did it actually all wrong. <laughs> yeah. This gotta be behind the bead. Oh, like man. this, yeah. And now when I push it on, it pushes the excess into this groove so that it doesn't go onto the camshaft. Put bolts in. Permatex. Oh, it's from the avi aviation, aviation industry. Um, when it's cured, it has the exact same consistency as the Loctite, what they specify. So now we gotta go that tightening order with six Newton meter. And we don't have the Loctite that and they then specify. We go, no, we don't have that. 10 Newton meter. Let's do 11. And on the last one, it's important that we mount the pump while the glue is still fresh. And this bead here, I'm not allowed to wipe off now according to the manual. The pump needs to get stuck into this glue bead. Well, maybe you need to put a little bit more on it. Well, it's good enough. It's a flush surface. What kind of a pump is that? Vacuum. Oh. Yeah. These we got torqued. Now I can pull this pin. Oh God, please don't. Yeah. And of course we got a new gasket. Yeah, yeah, I saw the new we gasket. Got from Land Rover. And I look up the torque. Like this. And this pin is triggering the bomb. What? This is the oh, belt tensioner. The tension. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for today. Thank God, it's late. I'm tired. So this got to go here. What? <laughs> it could also go like this. <laughs> You're so stupid. I got like here a special trick from Broken Piston Garage. So I stick this socket in here. This keeps the belt yep. pushed on. And of course I have my crankshaft locked in position with my crankshaft timing pin here on the side and also with the locking pin on the flywheel. I yep. lay on this belt flat the idea is, when I now later on tension this tensioner and this pulls on it, that this has room to go. Oh. This is important. So he almost put on the turbocharger on the wrong side of the engine. <laughs> that is, that's a standalone information that's not accurate. Okay? Connected this to the oil pressure sensor port. And now I put in half a liter of oil, fresh oil. And this should fill all oil galleries overnight now. I marked every component which needs to be disconnected in future when we remove it the second or third time on Fabian's car that we know exactly how to get it off. So every sensor, every pipe fitting right here has a marking and also which brackets got to be removed. So that's now the fourth attempt. <gasps> oh my god. We can take our motor mount out. This Engine is... mount. <laughs> So this is really, really smooth. Yeah, looks really nice. Can you actually believe it that we have three oil pumps in our tool shop? But I wanted you to see how we measure the distance without taking these out. See, that's exactly the same width. 
this is our performance test stand, what I built. So I have like a backing plate where I can mount the pump to. Here's my crankshaft. But we see now a standstill of the rotor. So we got now 780 RPM. So he's done sinking okay. and yeah. everything has to be changed again. Yeah, I gotta adjust it to more than one bar. <laughs> One, two, three. I would say a second slower. The last test for tonight, then where I can go to bed. Mm. And we'll put this in here. And this is pump number one. No, I mean, if we should put this oil into the new pump. That's good oil. That's brand yeah. new oil. It already looks like... <gasps> Okay, that's enough for this episode. This was one assembly day. A now, long one. There are a lot more videos about this engine and how we got to this point. You can see there is a line boring video, a crankshaft install, there is a piston install and there are more videos down the road. Good. There is a lot more repair content for Land Rovers on our channel. Please check it out. It's all about tweezers and inspection mirrors and not 17 millimeter spanner wrenches and hammers like you got them on the Toyota channels and Please make sure to subscribe if you like that channel and if you're already subscribed, please don't unsubscribe See you next Sunday